Welcome along to Story Beard Story Cabin. Have you come for a tale? Yes? Excellent. Now our story today is called The Prince and the Bag of Stories. It comes from quite some time ago and it goes a little something like this. There was once a prince who lived many years ago and far from here and his favourite thing in the whole wide world was listening to stories. His mother and his father would tell him stories but by far his favourite were the ones told to him by a wise servant who would sit on the edge of his bed each night and tell him his bedtime story. In fact the prince liked these stories so much that each night after the servant had left he would pull out a bag from under his bed and he would whisper the story into the bag and then tie up the top of the bag so the story couldn't get out. To start with that story was no bigger than a little leather purse for holding coins but as the days turned into weeks, the weeks into months and the months into years that story bag got bigger and bigger and bigger till it filled up almost the entire space under the prince's bed and no matter how much his friends asked or how often they begged him he would not share even one of those stories with them now the time came when the prince was to get married and he was to marry a woman from a kingdom many miles away he was going to move and become the king of that land and so absolutely everything that he owned was being packed up for this great move and he had told the wise servant his favorite storyteller that the bag from under his bed had to be taken with them the servant quite elderly by now reached under the bed to pull out the bag of stories. Now this bag had grown so much that as the servant was trying to pull it out it got stuck and he had to pull and pull and pull and suddenly oh, that bag came loose the servant went falling over backwards and he let go of the neck of the bag and as he did so three stories escaped and started circling round the room up by the ceiling. The servant grabbed the neck of the bag and tied up the piece of rope around the top of it again. And as he was doing so, he heard the three stories speaking. The first story said, five years I've been in that bag, five years. To teach the prince a lesson, I'm going to go out onto the road where he's going to travel and I'm going to turn myself into a watermelon field. And when he is hungry driving by, in his coach he will want to stop and eat a watermelon and when he does I'm going to give him the worst stomach ache in the world. The second story said that's nothing, nothing. Ten years I've been stuck in that bag so I'm going to go out down by the side of the road and I'm going to become a well and when the prince passes in his coach he'll be terribly thirsty and he'll get down from the coach and he'll drink a glass of water and I will give him the worst headache in the world that will teach him for keeping us in the bag. The third story said that is nothing I have been in the bag for 15 years I am going to the palace where the prince is going to live and I am going to turn myself into a snake and on his wedding night, I'm going to hide in his room. And when he goes to bed, I'm going to bite him and his bride and kill them both. And as soon as this was said, the three stories whipped round the ceiling. Whew, once, twice, three times and out of the window and off across the countryside. The servant didn't know what to do. He knew that if he tried to tell the prince, the prince wouldn't believe him. So all he could do, along with all of the other prince's possessions, was load the story sack onto the coach and head off. 
when they travelled the next day. It was a warm day, so the prince sat in an open-topped coach, with the wise old servant and the driver up ahead. And as the day went along, the prince began to get hungry. And as he began to get hungry, he spied a watermelon field off to one side of the road. And he called out to the servant. He said, ah, I'm hungry. Let's stop. I can see watermelons. I would really like a watermelon. The servant, pretending not to hear, just carried straight on with the driver. As they went past the watermelon field, the prince came forward and he tapped the servant on the shoulder and he said, didn't you hear what I said? I said I wanted a watermelon. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, said the servant, but my ears are not what they once were and I, I just didn't hear you. I am so sorry. Oh, very well, said the prince, and he settled down back in the coach. Soon, though, having drunk all of the water from his flask, he was getting thirsty. So he said to the servant, he said, servant, and he tapped on the shoulder, he said, do keep an eye out on the road and when we come to the next well, please stop there so I can refill my flask with water. Right you are, said the servant. Two miles later, a well came into view on the side of the road. The prince smiled and looked at it and the carriage just went straight past. The prince leant forward and he tapped the servant on the shoulder. He said, why didn't you stop at that well? The servant said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, your highness. My eyes are not what they once were. I am old. I, I did not see it. We will make sure we stop at the next well. By the end of the day, they had arrived in the neighbouring kingdom. The prince and the princess met spent several weeks getting to know each other, and then they were married. There was a huge celebration. And once everybody was tucking down into the wedding feast, eating all wonderful food, the old wise servant snuck away up to the prince and princess's bedroom. And he started turning the entire place upside down, desperate to find the snake. He pulled out the pillows and went through all the feathers. So there were feathers flying all around the room and he pulled off the sheets and he tore them and he dug into the mattress with a small knife so he could pull the stuffing out to check the snake was not there. This took so long that he hadn't finished before the prince and princess came up to their room. The prince said, what on earth are you doing? The old servant said, Dad, my prince, I think there may be a snake. I think there may be a snake. And he kept pulling away at cushions and he kept opening wardrobes and pulling out all the clothes. And eventually he lifted up a large rug that covered the floor. And there underneath it was a snake lying in wait. The wise old servant grabbed a stick that he brought along for just this purpose picked up the snake on the end of it and threw it out the window. And as he did, whoosh, the snake disappeared and became a story alive in the air again. The prince looked at me, oh, what? what's that? Well, my prince, said the old servant, and he explained. He explained why he'd pretended not to hear the request for the watermelon because the story was going to give the prince a stomachache and he told why he pretended not to see the well by the side of the road because that story was going to give the prince a terrible headache. And then he told him about the third story that had been in the bag for 15 years and how it had turned into a snake. The old servant took the young prince's hand and said, stories are not to be hoarded like a miser hoards gold. They are to be shared. The prince said, you are obviously right. I've been foolish. 
he leant down to this enormous bag of stories and holding tight to the top, he undid the rope and he put his ear to the side and then he let go like that and one story came out. He tied the top back up and then he told that story back to the old servant and to his new bride. And the next day he let out a story and he told it to the servant's children in the palace. And so he went day by day and the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months and the months into years and that story bag got smaller and smaller and smaller as he shared all of these stories around. And as he shared them around, he discovered that by sharing them, he didn't lose them at all. They stayed with him and they were given to other people at the same time. Until one day, the story bag was back the size of a little leather purse that would sit in the palm of your hand. And there was only one story left. The prince opened it up and the story came out and he listened. And it was the story of how he had learned to share stories. That story he told to anyone who would listen. And they told it to their children and their children to their children. And last year, an excellent storyteller called Abby told it to me. And now I have told it to you. For stories do not wish to be hoarded like a miser hoards gold. They wish to be shared from mouth to ear, from life to life. I hope you enjoyed the story of the Prince and the Story Bag. If you'd like to listen to more stories, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can also find me on Facebook just by searching for Story Bead. I hope to see you back here very soon in the Story Cabin for another story. Until then, take care my friends. Bye bye now.